usually about half past six. Yeah, I like to try and walk in the shade as much as I can. Mm. Every day is different. Mm. Sometimes I'll get to the rock and the moon's just behind the rock. And the moon and the rock and the road. Down by the river yesterday I was uh, I'm brush cutting. I'm cutting mm. a line to plant more trees. I looked at the river, which is flowing quite quickly, and thought, it's just me down there and the river, mm. but it's, it's a kind of a unique thing. And it, it makes me feel happy that I'm here um, and doing that. It's 50 years this year, yes. Yeah, we, we met in 1972 and we were married. No, no, we no, met early. 70. 70. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was in my last year at university. And I was in my first. Yeah, it really, yeah, anyway. And we got, I was in... So we got I, married in 72. Yeah. I first saw Laura in the refectory and we never spoke. Eventually I worked up enough courage to say, would you like to go and see a movie or something like that? So that's how it all started, I think. Yeah, yeah. He kept up a pretense when I asked him where he came from and he said he was from Mars. And he kept it up for weeks. Well, you yeah, never know, actually. We might all come from Mars. Yeah. Or somewhere else in the universe. You need luck. Yeah, you, need. you need luck, but you need you need a degree of flexibility. You know, like two people change over fifty years. You have mm. to be. Um, you have to be willing to change, or to change things to keep enough of a an equilibrium. I think. Yeah, Laura made incredible meals. <laughs> Always has. And no matter what we've got, it's enough uh, to feed the family. So, and she had aspirations which I didn't have, but I went along with them. Like, this <laughs> Building house. houses and bucket yeah, houses. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Before we bought this property from the Spackmans, they own this mm. uh, farm, um, I was doubtful about going down that in that direction and, and staying on in Australia I you know I had my doubts about it and then I thought well I'll just go along with it and we'll see what happens and as it turned out she was right about <laughs> this place um, um, to the extent that you feel very much in love with it and well I did like, yeah and I, I, and yeah it sort of more so now than I've ever been, really. Um, mm. Right where we are now, I'm thinking more about the future. Uh, I'm 75, <coughs> Laura's 71. And I'm thinking, uh, I don't really want to leave this place. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. This is a garden within the place that we call Colonsey. Um and that's where the making happens. The rest is, there's very little tampering with the rest of it. It just is, which is lovely. But the sheds provide another space for us to to do the making things. Mm. Yeah. There's a kind of an inner world, and this is our inner world. Mm. And then there's an outer world. And I get really pissed off with the outer world. <laughs> but I'm quite content with it. the inner world, so to speak. Um, we made a life and, and wanted to build a mud brick house. It'd been something that had been kind of at the back of my mind when we left the UK. Um, you know, I, I, oh, you did. <laughs> um, I had all the books, they're all UK books. Mm. But we'd lived overseas, we'd experienced other sort of architectures, especially in places with no electricity, um, with no running water, when I'm sure that's what made me want to sort of build something for ourselves, but in keeping with the place. And I, I've thought a lot about that tendency and I recognise it as a very, it could be seen as a very colonising one to call it after somewhere in Scotland. But I, in those years and since then I was thinking a lot about belonging and how you belong in place. And their place in Colonsey is one of the, one of the um, islands off the west coast of Scotland, a very small place. 
and it's kind of like my heart place, even though I wasn't born there and I don't mm. actually have a family collection here, but it's like a miniature version of the island I was born in. And, and I loved being there so much and I loved being near the sea so much that when we leave, or it causes me great pain, and it used to cause me great pain, the leaving. And even when we came here, and we went to the coast, there's a place we go every year that I love to bits and it had the same emotional pull for me. Um, and it's quite, a, but, it, but it, at the, in that time and over a period of time, I was began to understand that that was very corrosive. And I really had to put a lot of um, thinking into how do you belong? when the longing isn't about an absence, it isn't about something negative, it isn't about pain. How do you turn that ache for somewhere, that love of something that's so painful when you can't be there in, in its absence, how do you turn that around into a different kind of belonging where it's productive and positive? And, mm. and so I called, we called the place, I, we called the place Collinsy. Um, but even after we had done that, I was... Um, unpicking this idea of what it means to come to this country and what you bring with you uh, and what what it means how to set out rebuilding a sense of belonging and and longing without that negative corrosive um, sense of absence or yeah I want to live in about five or six different places at once you know I want to be able to go back to where I was born and live there. I want to live in Edinburgh where we, after we were, were married. I want to live in the Canary Islands where I worked once before. Um, so I'm, I'm very content being here. Uh, and I don't, I don't, I do have feelings of guilt because this isn't our land, in, in a sense. It's much more about a state of being. Mm. Not, not just, I mean it is, there's always the specificity of the place which is wonderful. But there's also something about how you're relating overall to being in place. And, and for me, I think that I, a lot of the, um, the making and the doing, and for me, doing community, even in a limited way, is about is where the belonging comes. It's actually sort of being out there. Mm. I, and and I, don't, I mean in a fairly spontaneous way, but that's what makes... That's what knits you into the place and reveals the place and um, it contextualises all that rich life. And I, yeah, and I think you could do that anywhere. Laura has weird ideas. <laughs> <laughs>